Hi drummers, hope you're well. Just another little student request for you here. This is how to play the drum beat from When the Levy Breaks by Led Zeppelin, of course, the great John Bottom on drums. And it goes something like this. So we're talking here straight eights on the hi-hat a big solid whack on two and four on the snare, so essentially a basic straight eights feel. So the movement is it's all from the kick, man. It's all about the kick drum here. You've got the kick on beat one, you've got the snare on two, you've got a kick on the last sixteenth of beat two. Ah, uh, so so far one, two, three, and four. Uh. You've then got two kicks on the ander of beat three, three e ander. So kick and snare part. So that's cool. Uh, the there's a great phrase, I think, great musical phrase. When you start putting it together with a hi hat, that may or may not, depending on how long you've been playing the drums, take a bit of thinking about. People always ask me, like, where would these grooves appear in the grades? Uh, in a grade, maybe like a four, I reckon. Uh, maybe a three, maybe a four, I reckon, for this one. I'm going to build it up in that classic style, one kick at a time. I'm going to play the full hand part. And we're going to build this groove, which is just a one-bar phrase at the top, um, one bass drum note at a time. First kick, beat one. Next kick, if this is the grade three vibe, it's on the uh of beat two, in between the hi-hats, in between the one that's on the and of beat two and beat three. One and two and uh, that one there, three and four and one and two and uh, three and four. One and two and three and That's cool. If you are at the, about the grade three level, or particularly like starting out around the grade three level, if you're anything like me when I was at that point, uh, you'd be really tempted for your right stick to go with your right foot like on, on that kick that goes in between the hi-hats. Uh, so just go slow, man. If you land that kick in the gap, it'll work. Okay, next kick is on the and of beat three. This one in sync with the hi hat. And the final kick, making the bottom two quick sixteenths, is on the uh of beat three, in the same way that the previous one was on the uh of beat two. It's in between the hi hats, and this one will follow straight after the kick you just played on the and. Okay, I'm going to go through it one time again, adding one kick as we go. First of all, just beat one. Now the end of beat three. 
that's a great way of working it up. There are some other cool ways you can think about the coordination here. One of the most beautiful, for me, like life-changing, amazing things about teaching the drum lessons that I've taught here over the years now, is you actually see different people's brains working in different ways and you, by kind of getting it wrong quite a lot, you work out the various cool ways that different types of people like to approach things like coordination. It's actually really beautiful to see different people's brains working in different ways and how certain combinations of things can work well for different people. So that can be, that method we just learned can be a great way of building the groove up. Another great way can be thinking about small little moments. Now I like to think about individual beats. Obviously there are four beats in the bar and each little beat has some kind of little combination of notes, some little thing. So I quite like to do this as well, or alternatively, little bite-sized chunks. In that case, a beat one would sound like this. And here we're playing all the parts of the kit. So beat one, one and, all right. Beat two goes two and a, like black current, right? Hi-hat and snare, hi-hat kick. So then we put together beats one and beats two, and we end up with and four and and four and and four last time. Getting these little bite-sized chunks. Then it's quite fun to string you know beats one and beats two together into the first half. Now beat three. This also has the overall rhythm of three and a. Eighth note, two sixteenth notes, it goes hi hat on its own, hi hat with kick, kick on its own. This is probably the trickiest bar, trickiest, sorry, beat in the bar. Three. And for me, this method of building a groove up is all about just making friends with it, showing your hands and your feet and your musical brain the combination of things. We're not performing the groove at this point, we're just making friends with the moments of coordination involved. This is beat three. Three and up. Three and up. Beat four, no kicks at all, just four and. So beats three and four, the second half. Okay, quick reminder, beat one and two, the first half. Beats three and four, the second half. Whole thing. So honestly, I really, really like both methods. One method is playing the hand part all the way through, add the kicks one at a time. Another method is look at each little beat as if it was like a little island, work out the coordination, put together beats one and beats two, the first half, beats three and four, the second half, and then sort of glue the whole thing together. So that is when the levy breaks, that's just the intro groove. Now you might notice when you listen to the original, there's a few more notes than that audible on the track. And I believe that's because a delay effect was used after the drums were played. Um, you can recreate that delay effect by playing, after the snare drum hit, each time, a, sh a much quieter uh, ghosted note, a real soft note, on the next semi-quaver. So you get that kind of delay effect, or echo in common parts. And then you've got the uh, kick drum, which when you play like on beat one, for example, you'd play it strong, and then likewise a quieter note straight after. recreate the sound if you want to but uh, it's not super necessary that was uh, an effect that was added after
even add in more ghosted notes. I often do this, I play this song live, I often just add in more ghosted notes just to give it that kind of bottom, like playing live flavour. <laughs> That's all you need to play it authentically like Bonham did, as far as I'm concerned. Thanks so much. Any questions about that one, give us a shout. That was a brilliant little suggestion, and I uh, hope the video was useful. Thanks again for watching. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks to all the lovely people who bought me a coffee at Buy Me A Coffee. And uh, my exciting new thing is I've got a little Amazon shop. People ask me a lot about the gear that I use here, and the books that I recommend, and all the stuff that's featured in these videos, and things that I use at gigs. I put them all together in one place, so you can just go and have a look at all the stuff I recommend. And that is uh, amazon.co.uk forward slash shop forward slash Mike Barnes drums. Check that one out, and I'll link in the description to that as well. Any questions about any of this stuff, give us a shout, and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.